Morning, my friends. I'm going to readjust my table here. So how are you? I hope you're well uh, on this Friday morning. I see that the video is doing a little bit of this, so <laughs> I hope it's going to settle in and be okay. So I wanted to jump on and share with you actually something that just came through in my meditation, and uh, it was all about all of you. So one of the things that I do periodically, especially if I'm going to be sitting down to be writing, um, which I'm going to be doing uh, as soon as I finish this video, is that I sit down and I go into meditation and I invite my higher self in and I invite my inner copywriter and my uh, inner business expert all to come in. And uh, then from my heart, I uh, send out uh, a love signal, right? Just this beaming, beaming bright light. And I invite the higher selves of all of my uh, ideal clients. All of the souls who are in the world at this time who are meant to connect with me in some way or other. And as I was doing this this morning, I had th this light that generally shines out of my heart actually turned into like a huge uh, a light from a lighthouse, right? So that you would see spreading out over the water and, and sort of scanning the horizon. And as it was scanning the horizon, and it was sort of one of those foggy nights, right? Which is the lighthouse, you need the lighthouse in the fog. Um, out on the horizon where it had been completely dark, all of a sudden, as I was sort of scanning the horizon, all of these lights started to light up, like all of these ships <laughs> that were connecting to the light that I was sending out, and that was sort of activating their lights. And it was just a beautiful um, few moments of uh, this visual, right, this imagery coming to my mind. And so once I sort of gave thanks for that and connected with each of the lights that was coming on and it was, you know, more and more hundreds, maybe thousands of like ships, right, sort of coming in, um, I asked what message my uh, ideal clients, the people who I'm supposed to be speaking to and working with, what did they what message did they most need to hear today and um this is what came through so the first was sort of a sort of a montage what came first was sort of a montage of women coming forward with this general sense of who am i am i good enough you know, sort of that theme, right, that a lot of us carry um, from our life experiences. And once I got the sense of that, it didn't take very long. Um, you know, also, as I say, the word long, what, what else was coming up was sort of a sense of longing, of wanting to be or do or have more, um, but not really sure, right, what that was or that they were equipped for that or that they were worthy of that. So, and you know, and I know that that's a theme among women. Uh, it just tends to hang there <laughs> in our energy fields and in our subconscious. But as that information sort of started to subside, what came through then was this story that I have told before. I did not make it up. It was, uh, you know, something that I heard or read many, many years ago. Um, different variations on a theme. So I'll just share with you as best I can bring back <laughs> uh, what came through for me today. So the idea is that you are not solely. You are not exclusively this body, um, this person who you identify as. I see Nancy. It's not Nancy. Hi, Peggy. It's not Peggy, right? That this person is one aspect 
of a greater spiritual um, truth, essence of who you are. And so at a certain point in time, your soul decided to come down into form. So imagine this like on this huge, in this huge theater of earth school, we're holding a play and there are all of these different parts that are available for different souls to come down to audition for, right? And your soul at a particular point in time decided to audition or come into the part in the play that the 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 character, I should say, the character in this play that would allow you to progress on your soul journey according to whatever your soul decided was the next stage of growth for you. So I'm just going to use an example. Years ago, I read a book by uh, a spiritual teacher by the name of Steve Rother. And the name of the book was Spiritual Psychology, uh, which of course caught my interest, but he wasn't a psychologist at all. Actually, he'd been a contractor <laughs> who had this amazing sort of uh, awakening experience and went on to become a spiritual teacher. But in this book, he talked about... Uh, sort of soul purpose. And I think he had 12 different reasons or um, growth opportunities that a soul would choose to step into. So it might be to practice to, to, so in each lifetime, we have sort of in his model, sort of a primary um, life growth opportunity, and then a secondary. And it may be things like forgiveness, setting boundaries, self-love, truth, grace, compassion, right? So the soul sort of has this overarching um, agenda, if you will, of the area that it wants to grow and progress through in this part of its journey through eternity. So it looks down on Earth School and this play we're putting on here and says, oh, that role, that part, that character would be a great opportunity for me, the soul, to grow. It has all of the necessary prerequisites, right? The the period of time it's going to come in, the family system it grows up in, the religious influences, right? The dramas. And so literally our souls pick a time, a place, a family um, that will provide the best set, if you will, right? All the scenery, the set, uh, the act in the play that would allow it to have its greatest opportunity to grow in the area that it had chosen for this particular incarnation. So literally the soul comes down and inhabits this little form, <laughs> right? That comes into this world, um, completely forgetting the fact that in fact, it is a soul that has compressed itself, if you will, into this physical form. And it begins to move through whatever life experiences that particular child, now you, has chosen as the vehicle, as the character in the play that's going to present it with the greatest number of opportunities to master the lessons that it has chosen to master in this lifetime. So the play goes on, you know, right? Everybody does what everybody does. Some people die, some people win, some people lose. Uh, lots of drama, right? And as what happens in plays, at the end of the play, 
each character or each sort of group of characters, you know, come back out onto the stage to do their final bow and, and receive their applause. So imagine now at the end of your life, at the end of, you know, your play on planet Earth, you or all of the characters come out onto the stage one by one or in a, in a group and literally uncloak themselves, drop their costumes <laughs> and reveal themselves as the brilliant light, the spark of creation that in fact you are, which all of this time has been hidden under the guise of this personality, right? This persona that your soul chose to take on in this lifetime. So just, you know, a short recap to imagine that this is really all a play and each of us has chosen a part that would allow us to grow in the way our soul's intelligence um, imagined would be the, the greatest opportunity for the growth of our soul at this point in our, um, you know, in, in our ascension process. So I want to bring that back a little closer to home because it, it may sound, you know, a little bit out there like, yeah, right. <laughs> but I want to bring this closer to home because there's, there's something, there's a story, uh, a personal story for me that was the perfect revelation of this um, Earth School story slash play that I've been carrying around in my head for years. So um, I have six brothers. Five of them are older than me, one younger. And one of my brothers passed away five years ago. Yesterday was the anniversary of his passing. It's also very weird because it's one of my other brother's birthdays. Um, the day after what would have been my wedding anniversary, the day before my sister-in-law's birthday and her and my other brother's anniversary. I mean, there's all this like stuff, family stuff crammed into these last few days of July. But in any event, um, my brother Ed passed away five years ago yesterday. And the story, I, I sat down um, sometime after he had passed away to write a blog. And I started by sort of telling the story of Ed's hard life, right? My brother was smart, he was funny, he was kind. Uh, I, I can't repeat funny, funny, funny. Like when Ed was telling a story, it was, you know, pee in your pants kind of funny. So, um, and Ed struggled with mental illness and uh, drugs and alcohol. And so, you know, he had a very challenging uh, life. And so I was sitting in meditation one day um, getting ready to thinking about writing this blog and kind of had the story of who Ed was running through my mind. And all of a sudden, and I'm not someone who gets a whole lot of visual like input um, more than I used to. But, you know, five years ago, you know, it wasn't a regular occurrence. But all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there holding this thought of my brother and what was wanting to come through in terms of, you know, my, what I was going to write about him. I saw his face come in. Um, and then it, it sort of exploded. And what was in front of me was this brilliant light, yellows and pinks and greens and blues and all just this beautiful, uh, like a fireworks display, right? Not, not quite that, intense, but just these beautiful colors just expanding into the universe. And I absorbed that for a few moments and kind of laughed and said, okay, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> I appreciate that. And then it sort of whoosh, came back into just Ed's face. And, you know, the message clearly was 
that story that I lived and just released is not the truth of who I am, right? It goes back to what I started with. It's a persona, a personality, a storyline that I took on in this lifetime, but it's not the essence of me. It's not the all of me. And it doesn't define me because now I have released that and I'm back fully into my expansive, you know, divine expression of light and love. So that's the message today for any of you who may be thinking that you're too old or too young or you don't have the time or you don't have the message or you don't have something or you're not good enough in some way, shape or form because of the story, the her story, her story, right? Her story um, that you use to describe yourself. So I'm going to just invite you to let that story go. Trust that that story was part of an experience that your soul chose, as difficult, as challenging as it may have been. That it was actually a soul choice to come into that particular set of circumstances so that you could learn the lessons of whether it's forgiveness or self-love or setting boundaries or compassion or grace or generosity or truth, and there are a few more. Um, but it was the perfect training ground for your soul while it was here in earth school <laughs> to learn those lessons, right? So if you can remember that apart from this, you know, a seemingly physical, but not really earth suit that you're walking around in, that you are a much bigger, brighter uh, light and you're so essential and you're so worthy um, and you have everything within you to step into whatever your next highest expression of your soul's purpose is in this life. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you found this uh, entertaining <laughs> and hopefully useful. Uh, from me and Ed and um, all of the beautiful guidance that, that came in around this this morning. Um, I say namaste and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Hey, Tori, just on time as I'm signing off, but you can certainly listen to the replay. All right. Bye, everybody.